Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. The jungle gene is an incomplete dominant gene which affects both the pattern and the color of boa constrictors. Although jungle is a very popular gene and it's widely seen, it can be very variable in its appearance and it's often very confusing, especially if you're new to boas. So today I want to show you a few examples of jungle boas and I'm going to point out the physical traits which define the jungle morph. I'm also briefly going to touch on the history of the jungle morph, as well as discuss the super jungle uh, form of the jungle morph. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. The jungle morph is one of the oldest morphs in boa constrictors. It's been around for at least the last few decades, and it was first bred by a breeder named Lars Bramble from Sweden. He had a striped Colombian female boa that he bred to a normal looking male Colombian boa and in the offspring about half of them had the striped appearance and those were the first jungles produced in captivity. He then bred some of the or one of the striped um, animals back to the striped mother and he produced a variety of different phenotypes of boas uh, including some that had an extreme form of the jungle which were the first super jungle boas. Jungle is an incomplete dominant gene, which means that an animal only needs one copy of the jungle gene to have the phenotype uh, associated with jungle. If an animal has two copies, then it has what's known as super jungle, which is a more extreme form of the jungle uh, phenotype. The physical traits associated with the jungle gene can be very variable, and often they're hard to identify if, you're not, if you don't know what you're looking for. There's at least seven or eight different characteristics that are commonly seen in jungle boas. And what's a little confusing is that every jungle boa is not gonna have all these characteristics. And there are some boas that have some of the characteristics, but they're not jungle boas. So how do you know if you have a jungle or not? Well, I recommend studying pictures of jungles online on different websites and really familiarize yourself with the appearance of what a jungle boa looks like. There's a unique look to the jungle boas. In addition, ask questions about the breeder and be confident that the parents were jungles so you would expect that some of the offspring are gonna be jungles. It actually gets even more confusing because jungle is often mixed with other genes. Um, it's very common uh, morph to mix with albinos and hypos and virtually every other morph that's known in boa constrictors. And when you mix a, several different morphs in one boa, the contribution of each, more, each of the specific genes can get somewhat diluted. So it's harder to tell if you have a jungle, if there's a bunch of other genes in there too, um, versus just if the animal just has a jungle by itself. One of the most impressive characteristics associated with jungle boas is the striping or pattern aberrancies. And a lot of people have the impression that that's what defines a jungle boa. But in fact, not all jungle boas have these. Um, in fact, most of them don't have this extreme striping or extreme pattern aberrancies. So I wanna show you a few animals. This animal is a jungle sun glow. So it, it's a jungle boa. It's also called albino and it contains the hypogene. So as I mentioned before, it can be harder to tell the, whether it's a jungle when you have a mix, but in some cases it actually makes some of the differences easier to see. So the one defining characteristic that is probably the most important with jungle boas is you have a two-toned overall appearance. So when you look at the dorsal surface, the back of the animal, you see a very clean, very light colored, um, color to the dorsal surface, almost creamy in appearance. And then when you look at the side of the boa, you'll see this abrupt transition to a different color. And you can see here, we have this really nice light yellowish, creamy looking dorsal surface. And then the side is much more orange. And there's this really abrupt transition between the two colors. Typically along this transition, you'll see freckles and speckles a pigment, this animal, because it's an albino, we don't see that. So another trait that's relatively common in jungle boas, but not always, is you'll see a broken head spear. So if you look at the head of this animal, the spear on the top of the head is broken. 
and the um, markings on the side of the head are also a little bit different. They kind of end before the eye. And then one final difference or phenotype characteristic to note in this animal, if you look at the saddles, the shape of the saddles are kind of rounded and they're missing some of the points normally seen. And this is also um, partially due to the hypogene that's in this animal, but the jungle definitely has an effect on the shape of the saddles. So another example of a jungle, this is a Moran jungle boa. Uh, the Moran gene affects mostly the coloration and gives it this pastel coloration. So most of the markings are in this animal are due to the jungle gene. I actually don't have any animal that's just a jungle. So looking at the animal, first we notice just how clean it is overall. You can see how few background markings there are and how crisp the saddles are. It's a very clean looking boa. Next you'll notice this kind of striping aberrancy. If you look at the neck, towards the neck of the animal, you'll see these three saddles that are kind of connected and elongated. So often you see just partial striping like this in these animals. Looking at the shape of the saddles themselves, you can see they're much more round in appearance than they would normally be. And then very characteristic, if you look at the dots within the saddles, normally boas will have this little tiny dot or a dash there. But in a jungle boa, the dots are often greatly enlarged. So you can see how large the dots are within the saddles. And then lastly with this boa, if you look at his tail, you can see how the tail saddles are outlined with this really neat black color. Okay, so it's very crisp. Um, it's almost geometric looking in shape. So the jungle greatly enhances the overall cleanliness of the boa and makes it look much cleaner. So this next animal is one of my favorite jungles. This is a VPI T-positive junglo boa. And so this animal is similar to the Kal junglo that I showed you um, at the beginning of this video, except this animal has the T-positive, the VPI T-positive albino in place of the Kal albino. So in addition to the albino gene, she's got the hypo gene and the jungle gene. So the first thing you probably notice are these uh, partial striping and pattern aberrancies. So you can see her first three saddles and then the second group of three saddles that's connected by this cool stripe. And then if you look at the shape of her saddles, you can see how um, different they are than normal. They form these almost geometric shapes, uh, almost like a four point star, some of them. And you can see right in the middle, you see this little dot in the middle of the background pattern, or the background color rather, the lighter color. And then if you look at her dorsal surface, you can see how clean it is. I mean, she's in shed right now, unfortunately, but you can still see the difference between her dorsal surface. And looking at her side there, you can see her side is visibly darker with this a really abrupt transition between the two colors. Um, in some of the jungles, you, you'll even see these speckles of pigment between the transition there, you can see in her. And it almost looks like a stripe down the side of the animal in some of the jungles. And then lastly, if you look at her head, she's got a broken head spear. And then the side of her head, you can see that the um, pattern on her cheek, the, the color on her cheek stops before her eye. So a lot of really nice looking jungle characteristics in this particular animal. When you combine several other genes in association with the jungle gene, the effects of the jungle can sometimes be a little more subtle. So this is a Moran hypo jungle. She's got three incomplete dominant genes. Uh, the Moran gives her a pastel color. The hypo reduces the amount of the dark pigment. And the jungle, of course, as I said, gives both effects of the pattern and the color. And so this particular animal you can see she has a super clean look overall. If you look at her dorsal surface and her ventral, her side surface, you can see there's less of a contrast between the color, but it is there. You just have to look a little harder, but there, the color of her back is a little bit different from the color of her side. You can see the shape of the saddles, the um, 
points are rounded and she's got the larger than normal dots within the saddle. Um, the hypogene also causes a distortion or a different shape to the saddles. So um, it looks different when you have the hypogene in there as well. Uh, you can see some slightly aberrant saddles. And then if we look at her head, she's got a broken head spear. And this animal has just super beautiful head markings. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see the side stripe on her head kind of terminates early before her eye. And then she's got this beautiful teardrop marking. It's more pronounced on her left side here. But right under her eye, she's got this really beautiful teardrop marking. So just a gorgeous animal. And it shows you how the Moran, the Hypo, and the Jungle Gene combine to form this, or to create this really beautiful boa. So I want to show you one more jungle boa. This is one of the most recent boas that I've acquired. This is an IMG Hypo Jungle. And she's about a year old. So IMG is the increasing melanin gene. It's a gene that um, causes the animals to get darker as they grow. With each shed, they get a little darker. And so if you look at her overall appearance, you can see all these numerous speckles of black and freckling and background markings, which are due to the IMG gene. She's also got the hypo gene, which causes, uh, ironically, a reduction in black pigment, as well as some um, distortions of the shape of the saddles, and then the jungle gene. So a few things to look out for in this animal. You can see her dor dorsal surface isn't completely clean because of the IMG gene. She's got a lot of speckles on her, her dorsal surface, but compared to the sides, it's still quite a bit cleaner. If you look at the uh, sides, there's this abrupt transition between the, you know, a little bit dirty area and the really, really dirty background or, you know, speckled area. And you can also see this almost linear looking appearance. The um, speckles almost form a, this stripe on her side right at the transition between the, the cleaner area and the less clean area. And then if we look at her head, she has the broken head spear and then these really dark head markings due to the IMG gene. But then the jungle causes kind of a distortion in how they look and it causes um, her stripe to be cut broken before her eye. So really cool look overall with the combination of these three incomplete dominant genes. And I'm really looking forward to see how this animal develops over time. So you can see from those five examples of different jungle boas, the phenotype can be extremely variable. And often you'll see animals advertised as possible jungles, where it looks like they might be a jungle, but it's not 100% clear. Um, in other cases, it is 100% clear that an animal is a jungle boa. The last thing I wanted to discuss is the super jungle morph. And super jungle results when an animal has two copies of the jungle gene, one from the mother and one from the father. The super jungles have an even more extreme phenotype than the regular jungles. They have this really aberrant pattern and typically very clean background color, very high contrast. And the eyes are also very unusual. They have these large kind of bulging eyes. The super jungle doesn't appear to be a healthy morph. Most people who have produced them have reported that they live for about a year or two and then they end up dying. Some people have reported that they can get to adulthood, but then they're not able to reproduce. So you should really think twice before crossing two jungle boas because in the offspring, 25% of them are going to be super jungle and they might have these health problems. So that's a little bit about jungle boas. I hope this was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can write them below or feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.